a community so today we will see how can we create the security group and what is exactly security group okay so if we go as per the definition a security group controls the traffic that is allowed to reach and leave the resources that is associated with for example after you associate a security group with ec2 instance it controls the inbound and outbound traffic for the instance right so what do you mean by inbound and outbound traffic okay so let's see something okay okay so suppose you have created an instance okay this is inbound and this is outbound okay okay so this is your instance okay so this is inbound this is outbound okay so there is an ip of your instance okay which is associated whenever you will create we will see okay so inbound and outbound outbound means what okay so suppose you need these particular three resources resources in the sense suppose this is rds this is some a different cluster or something that you need it has to call you and then this is some different ip that has to associate with you or that has some work with your instance okay so in inbound we will go and assign the ip of this rds this cluster and this also whatever it will be suppose this is some different ip or different resource which has an ip okay so all these has to suppose this is just consider this is ip1 ip2 and ip3 okay so in inbound we will go and allow them like we will like we will have a barrier check kind of firewall where we have to allow them okay okay you can access it so in such a way we will in inbound we will actually assign the number 1 ip number 2 ip and number 3 ip right so in inbound when the check will happen all these three will be able to communicate with our instance right this is the actually this is what we do in inbound so we allow the particular resources to access us or access our instance or cluster whatever right so that's what the first part in security group second thing is that outbound so now you have an ip right so the this will be more like a reverse process from inbound so again we will see suppose this is an again an rds this is an cluster and this is again a third resource okay so now your instance has to access this right rds like suppose this is ip1 ip2 and ip3 this is rts this is some different cluster and this is some third resource so now in outbound you will allow these ips okay so you can access it whenever needed right so now you can access so this is what we do in outbound outbound means when we need to access inbound means when we allow to access right and um, like for the further process suppose this rds will have their security group so they are uh, in rds security group they used to uh, uh, allow in uh, their security group they or inbound in their security inbound they will allow our ip right so the same way in this cluster they will allow our ip in their inbound in this resource it will allow our ip our instance ip in their inbound so then only we will be able to access it so here outbound will go and here they will allow from their inbound the same way here we access from our inbound we are allowing from our inbound to these resources but the, these resources also has to allow in their outbound 
so okay they because they want to access right so of course in their outbound when they will allow then only they will be able to access our instance right hope you are able to understand so yeah this is what it is let's see how we created So I'll just go to old UI. This is also okay, but people might be familiar more with the old UI. Okay. Uh, it is not going to old UI. Let me see. We'll reload and check or we will create a new UI itself. Okay. Maybe it is not going for me to old UI. I'll just check it again. Okay. Let's see in the new UI itself. Anyway, we have to be habituated of this. Okay, so like test cluster, okay, in application OS, if you want to use something particularly, you can use it. I'm just using Amazon Linux itself. I'm just taking our Ubuntu, I'll take, I'll take Ubuntu for free tire. Okay, verify, instance type, this is T2 micro, it's fine for me, keep here. I have some existing key pairs, so I'll choose this. Okay, now in network setting, if you see VPC is here, right? Yeah, so now here it is asking you to create a security group or create or select any existing, if there is any existing security group that you need to use it, where already inbounds and outbounds are set up, you can use it. We are just taking as new security group creation. We are allowing SSH. So this is also one thing we are allowing in security group, like anywhere. This is internet IP. If you want to choose, you can allow HTTP, HTTPS. We will see there. Okay, if you want to configure anything, I don't want, I'm just launching simply. Let it get launched. Okay, it's in pending state. Let's wait for some time to come and running. But I can show you a little bit. See, so now whenever you will go to security, you will be able to see the security group that we had created newly, right? And the security group ID will also be present here. You can go inside the security group. And here you will see two things, inbound and outbound rules, right? So for allowing any inbound, you have to just click in the inbound. Suppose you have to access something. I don't have anything as such particularly, but I am just trying to give you a idea. Suppose you have some HTTP website, suppose some something I have, so that IP may be false somewhere. So that we can add it here, okay? Suppose just I'm just taking a simply 5214. Suppose this is my IP, okay, which is not landing in Apple Cider. IP Cider, sorry. So 172 dot, okay, leave it. We will create one more instance and then we will allow each other, okay? Let's see. I'll just quickly launch one another. instance. This is in running state, okay? It 
test 2 everything is fine for me I don't want any setting for now I'm just picking the create new oh sorry <coughs> this is correct no okay so now we will see we will have two security groups sorry two instances of course we will have two security groups as well so we can provide each other ips to each instance It's better to provide the IPs of each other instead of providing anything random, right? Okay, so now both are in running state. We will go to test one. We will take the public IP. Okay, now we will go to Now we will go to security groups of it's taking okay now it's launched now we are going to test to security groups and inbound we are going edit inbounds okay here's that, that was custom tcp we will provide this okay now you are able to see now we have added successfully the IP we you, you can provide like this is test class uh, test instance right so the first instance IP we have added in the second instance the same way you can provide in outbound as well right same way you can go here provide again in outbound outbound is to allowing them to access right okay so now this is test instance outbound right so this is how you can assign to uh, assign the inbounds and outbounds and allow so outbound means what inbound means whenever you allow to access and outbound whenever you want to access so here you can also access the test one and you can also allow test one to access right so the same way if like if test one needs to be accessed uh, you can take the ip of this instance and you can allow there right so whenever you will have some particular thing in the system that needs to be accessed so you can provide each other instances right as an example suppose suppose test one has jenkins and test two has your uh, web application or some different application so you have to allow each other then only the jenkins will be able to access that cluster if needed i'm just saying an example that may not be the ideal case right so yeah thank you thank you so much